Hi everybody, it's Robbie from Southern California and I'm hiding in my driveway. I am hiding in my driveway and I'll tell you why in a minute. But I've been going through and I've been trimming a lot of the plants. See the tomatoes? I trimmed the old Goliath down there from last year, the small one. I trimmed that up really good. And I've been trimming up everything because I need to plant one of these purple tree collards. And so I'm taking this purple bucket that looks blue on video and I don't know why. And I'm going to plant a purple tree colored in here. And I've been, see, here's my cutters. I've been trimming and just, because this is valuable to me. What I'm going to do, let me explain to you what I'm going to do here with this bucket. Let me set it back here. So I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to plant a purple tree colored in there. And I've got the holes not quite on the bottom. See, got about an inch of water. But if I was going to fill this up with, let's say, potting soil, it would probably cost me, I don't know, five, six dollars. Well, by doing it this way, I'm going to put a little bit of potting soil on the top. Maybe I'll find some native soil. I'm going to fill the whole bottom with leaves. Now you say, wait a minute, leaves aren't going to do anything. When I put some native soil in there, it's going to fall through. It's not going to sit on top. It's going to fall through it, get mixed in. And whatever microbes and earthworms get in there, they'll start eating the bottom. And then on the top, I'll have some potting soil and I'll move a purple tree colored in here. But I was just amazed at all the stuff going on. Let's see. I found the cocoon here. Look at this. I mean, whatever damage this thing did, it's already done. Can you see it right there? Let's see if you can see them. See that? Probably a, a cabbage moth. We don't want to knock it off. He's done his damage, he or she. And of course, the plant looks beautiful now. So I'm going to leave that. So I'm going to leave this one right where it is. And then this I was looking at, I'm going to say spring is almost here. And I think we're going to have a good spring, unlike the past two years where it's been really cold. There's been nights, God, last year and the night be year before, it would get down into the 30s a couple times. I think we're done with that. Because the wrens are already building a nest in the nest box that Gary provided. But look at this. This is last year's squash I didn't pull out. Look at this. I don't know, some sort of squash. But the part I'm amazed at, it's so determined to make a comeback. Look at the trunk on it. I really hope you can see this. I don't want to move too much. It's all split and broke and hanging on by nothing. And yet this plant has decided it's spring and it's going to make a comeback. I don't want to do this. Look at this one too. This one's trying to make a comeback. It's already growing zucchini. Old plants, just old rotted out, mildewy, powdery mildew plants. And so there's two of them in here. Since I'm not planting any new zucchini right now, I'm gonna leave them. And maybe I'll just throw some more leaves and stuff over that a little bit and take care of that. And we'll see what happens in the meantime because I'm not planting anything here. But I'm cleaning up my peppers. And what I'm gonna do here, I can't do it while I'm holding the camera as I'm going through and I'm trimming some of the leaves off. Can you see that? Not a lot, just some. Because even though the leaves have no use for me, these yellow leaves, because remember yellow leaves, the plant is taken care of and it's still trying to grow peppers. Because, and here's a new pepper and some new, you know, the plant's getting new growth in it. I don't want to take too much off because it might be sheltering it on cold nights, but I'm going to throw some tool over here. See all the new growth coming in? Isn't that beautiful for this? I think this is a California gold bell pepper. So I'm going to cover this with tool. Now why am I going to cover this with tool? Let's walk over there and I'll show you why. And why am I hiding? I'll show you why. This is why I'm hiding. Yes, this is why I'm hiding because he told me not to talk to him. His chain, this is an old mixer. He had one that used to have plastic gears inside and that one got really bad years ago when he bought this one. Well, this one's starting to wear out. So apparently the chain keeps falling off and I'm not allowed to talk to him during this time. So we're gonna let him do his thing. He wanted me to have a pad because we have no patios. You know, no patios here. Everything is just wood chips. So he put a pad there so I can get my garden together. Don't look at that because I don't think it's going to be set up that way. But let's go back to what I was doing and let him do his thing before he gets mad at us for bothering him if that chain falls off again. I don't want to be blamed. So we're going to walk back over here. I'm going to show you. Look at this. Isn't this gorgeous? This is something I'm going to talk about a thousand times. 
I have been picking zucchini off of this constantly. Look at this. We're in winter. The reason why this one is doing so good is I am composting in place here. Right inside the tote. This plant can't do anything but produce because it is just the happiest plant. It may look terrible because we're in winter, it keeps getting powdery mildew, keeps throwing all this new growth. I'm gonna trim some of that back. I don't wanna to trim too much because this does shelter the plant. See how it's moving? We've got wind. And when you've got cold wind coming up, that helps shelter the trunk, the base of the plant. So you just kind of want to leave it. So that's what I've been doing. Look, it works. And I'm getting zucchini on this all winter. But this has been the best producing one because of that. And that's why I'm going to show you how we're going to do it in the new garden, the rainbow garden. The eggplant is starting to take off. I've cleaned all this off. There was a lot of just dead stuff. Look at the peppers still in winter growing. But I want to show you, even though this is doing really good, look at that. I do a garden tour and I'll be honest, I forget a lot of stuff. These buckets are set up two different ways. I'm going to tell you how later. But I was starting to think this one was growing the same as that one. Nope, that one is growing better. That will be perfect for the summer and we'll talk about that one later. Those are the leeks. There were three. I showed that on the garden tour. The little tiny one didn't make it, but those are, they could be picked now and used. So, I'm, and this is the plant I cleaned up. That was the other Goliath. You might have seen it in the garden tour. Cleaned it all up and let me show you tool. Yes, we live up in the hills. That's a one-story house, they tell me. I don't want to get into that. Anyways, we live up in the hills. And yes, we have all kinds of rodents around here, all kinds of ground squirrels, tree squirrels. And yes, we periodically, we see rats. They don't like being out in the open, but you know, we do see rats and stuff. We have um, native rats, which are our pack rats. Gary loves those. They're entertaining. I mean, the way they... They build these homes that are massive. They can be a little tiny thing up to 40 feet and they make a condo and they have a, a kitchen and a pantry and, and sleeping quarters. Anyways, let's not get into that. I forgot that months ago I wrapped that tomato so there, nothing would get it. Months ago. <laughs> Let me grab my chair because I'm going to sit down and show you this so I can get down on the level since I don't have a tripod with me. It's just you, me, and a camera in hand. It's not even attached. It's not even attached anymore. And I trimmed all the dead leaves on it. Here it is. Swing it away. No rats come. No squirrels come. Nothing will touch it because it's wrapped in tulle. Isn't that amazing? So I'm going to probably take this off and use it for dinner this week. But it's not even attached. It's, it's long left the stem. I, I moved the tool wondering, what is the tool here for? I've got rocks in here. See, I, put, I just tied some rocks in here, give it a little weight so I can just wrap it around. And I wrapped it up months ago and forgot about it. But in the meantime, and that was bigger. It was left on so long, got really big. Some of them are quite small, but who cares? I've got, you know, tomatoes growing. So I wanted to show you that, but I have trimmed away a lot. Don't want to over trim because remember, some of the dead leaves are shelter for the plant. Now let's move over a little bit. This is just kind of a morning hello because I came out early and the sun is out and I know so many of you are under terrible snow and though we're cool, we're starting to warm up a little bit. Look at this. Now, this is something I've done without really thinking about it, but this fall I covered because things were bothering my tomatoes. Well, the tool kind of got all over everything, including my peppers. I'm trying to trim some of this back. I can trim that back. Of course, I don't have my bucket. My bucket's over there, and I want the bucket to put all this in. But look at this. This plant is covered in purple beauties. The, the purple bell peppers, look at this. I can't even believe how many there are. There's three there and a bunch of little ones starting. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, I've picked some too already, 11, 12, there's more in the back there. The tool, see now, I don't know if you can see this, see the wind moving? Can you see the leaves moving? When the wind comes up from the canyon, you know, it's cold. Well, this tool has kind of created, it was all over, it was covered all over. That's why I didn't even know I had that many peppers in the beginning. It's blocked a little bit of the wind 
it's held the heat in a little bit for the be uh, bell peppers growing here. Let's just call them bell peppers. And it's created its own little microclimate up against the wall. So though, look, without being covered, nothing's moving anymore. So the wind is somehow not getting through the tool, that little breeze. And I'm not sure if you can see this, but see, this has been moving off and on, but this one now isn't moving anymore. So when it's uncovered, the smallest amount of breeze comes through here. Just the smallest one. See, you can see my yarn moving over there. But the tool is stopping the wind. It is stopping the breeze that's going through. And completely stopping it has created this, whatever this, this plant likes, the perfect microclimate. Look at that. To continue to grow. There's a little bit of movement there, very small. But look at that, the wind is gone. So it's continued to have a microclimate all winter to grow all these peppers for me. So I thought I wanted to share that with you since I'm out here, uh-oh, trimming. Oh, there it is. You know, the handles really should be red. Martha, I've seen you paint. This is a Martha Stewart Cutters. I bought a whole bunch of them, I absolutely love them. I have seen her paint her handles red. Why she made them green? I guess because it looks nice. Should have been red. I would see it better. This I'm going to end up losing if I don't keep track of it. But I just wanted to share that with you because I'm going through today my project. Oh, a bumblebee or carpenter bee. Look at that. He's checking out the tomatoes. You know, when I was a kid, I used to run. Oh, look. Look, look. Let's zoom in because I haven't seen one for a while. Look at that, love. Can you see him? Gary loves them. I don't know what he's doing with the tomatoes. I think they eat insects, too. So he's checking out something on the tomato. Now, if he eats my tomato, then him and I are not going to be friends. But he is definitely doing something on the tomato. I don't know what he's doing. But he's definitely there doing something. I was a kid, my mother would go running in the house screaming and I'd have to follow behind her. So I used to run and scream. My dad used to tell me, no, bumblebees are your friend. And now only since I've been gardening here, I've gotten used to him. Yeah, I don't know what he's doing, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave him alone and keep going because he's perched himself there and he's staying there. So I've come out here to kind of clean up a little bit. Going to get, like I said, a purple tree colored in there. Going to freshen that up, but not keep that because once I start planting, I definitely want to get zucchini and things in here that I want. I need to clean this up. You saw when I cleaned it up, oh, about a month or so ago. It's got a lot of growth dying back, but here's the problem. This is a Goliath, and I got this plant from my daughter. She bought it online. It's a determinant, and it threw a ton of tomatoes, as you can see. It may be on its way out. So I might cut it back and let it come back, keep the good growth on it, because obviously it is still trying again, but I will be trimming that one back. But what my thing was is I wanted to get this a good halfway, three quarters full, push it down, get some soil on there, and then figure out which one of these purple tree colors is getting that bucket and being moved over there by that pole that Gary put in there, because he was thinking of putting a gate there for me and it's in a cement block he made. He likes his cement work. And this way they won't lean. See how they lean? They get really big and heavy. So if it has a big purple bucket, a big five gallon bucket, it can get quite big and I can just stake it to that. So that's what I'm doing today. Not much else, because I want to work on my rainbow garden. He's quiet over there. I don't know what he's doing. Let's do a peek and then I'll wrap this thing up. Is that bumblebee still there? No, nope, he's gone. So whatever he was doing, he, oh no, he is there. Maybe we'll come back and take a look at him, see if he's there when I come back. The lettuce is doing good, but I love the buckets. I'm going to grow this year tons of lettuce. I can come through here, pick a whole bunch. I made such a big salad the other day, I couldn't believe it was that big and we ate it the next day. Now that I figured out what the lettuce needs, now that I know what works, we're going to get more on. I have a video on lettuce. We'll do more on lettuce. The easiest plant to grow, the easiest plant to move once you figure out what it needs and it doesn't need much. Check out the other video and there'll be more. Let's see what he's doing. Look at him. You get to get a sneak peek. I put my cutters here, so in case I forget where it is, I can come back and look for it. And there it is. Look at that. He's gonna scream at me. No, he doesn't scream. He throws his dirty looks. That's about it. So how's it going? 
good. I've just finished the pouring. I just have to come back when it dries a little and do the edging. I let every I let everybody know you wanted me out of here because your chain keeps falling off. Okay. But look at that. So once he's done with this, I wasn't planning on this, but he looked at it and he, he like I said, he loves cement. So he figured he'd put some pads here and that will give me more things I can do with containers because a lot of you have patios. A lot of you and I don't. So this way you can see how you can set up a beautiful garden on a patio. This is staying just the way it is. He's just making a little edge across so I can put something there. So that's it. Let's get out of his way. So that's it. Let's go see if the bumblebee is still there. Which is really a carpenter bee. But you know when I was a kid if it was round it was black and it was bigger than a honeybee it was a bumblebee. And no he's gone now. I don't know what he was looking at there, but we're not going to stick our hand in there. There might be little insects on there or something, but there was something he definitely wanted. And whatever it was is fine with me. There might be little tiny insects. I don't know. He didn't make any holes, so there's no holes in the tomatoes. So he didn't eat them, so we know he doesn't eat tomatoes. Some birds eat tomatoes. So that's it. So I thought I would just say hello and tell you what I'm doing in the garden today. This is just south thistle. I leave a lot of that because the goldfinches come in. And then the wrens, we have the wrens that are going through each and every tote. They're so cute. They'll come through the totes and they'll jump in and they'll go into each tote. So will the toeys. But the wrens are now nesting. I'll show you where they're nest real quick before I wind this up. So this is just like a hello. And I wanted to get out here this morning. Yeah, see, normally I would trim all this back, but being that we're still cold and we can get, well, we've been getting down into the 40s at night, that, those old leaves are still protecting. And I know some of you are going to say, oh, it's going to spread everywhere, the powdery mildew. Well, nature takes things down when they have to. And though I can trim a little bit, and this plant is really on its way out. Even though it probably will make a really good comeback, I'm going to plant more. Because I want plants, I want the zucchini, I should say, now, I'm going to leave it. I could pick that now and use it. It's only that big. Or I can wait. Tomorrow will be double in size. And there's more coming up. So I might just cater to it. Throw a couple more things in the bucket. We're going to set up a bucket like this in my rainbow garden. A little different. Similar concept. You've seen my videos. But a little different. That's going to work out much better. And here, I don't know. I'm still debating what I'm going to do. This is all being changed. I never picked that squash. So the end of it's kind of being chewed up by something. Here's more lettuce. I've been picking and picking lettuce. This is different. This is sitting on top of this bucket. Which I... You see that? Just so you know, when I put that together, that was almost all leaves. And they've broken down. There's nothing planted in there. And that's what happens to all those leaves. Everything breaks down. See the shade? We're getting close. I've noticed the sun is higher in the sky. It still hits the tree. But which creates shade all day until later on in the afternoon. So that particular garden, this first chair garden I made last year, gets too much shade in the winter. Now, in another month, it's going to have plenty of sun so I can go back through there. Oh, she's back. Oh, we'll talk about that in a second, too. Uh, in another month, I can start planting anything I want. And you saw last year, watermelon, tons of zucchini, all kinds of stuff grew in there. It's just that it's not set up in the best place for winter. Had I not had food growing, it would have been very easy to just move it literally over 15 feet. But I didn't bother. I left it there. Every chair is perfect. Nothing's crumbling away. I figured if I tried it to move, if I try to move something, I could end up with an issue. So why not leave it? I had plenty of food all winter. You've seen this all winter. Everything. I've got tons of celery. I came and made a, a stir fry the other day. It's just beautiful. I've got tons of lettuce growing. I got lettuce growing all through there. Look how big the lettuce is. And I know you've seen it. Look at the tomatoes. I've got to go through here, collect all the tomatoes, and then trim the plant way back soon and decide what I'm going to do. Garlic chives, that's salad thistle for the birds. But look at this lettuce. Look at the size. Just by moving it a little while ago from the toad over there that's got all the baby lettuce, I moved, what, four lettuce in here, five lettuce in here. And by giving it room, they just take off. And that's why I love growing lettuce. I am going to grow mainly romaine because it does perfect here. No work for me. 
it does its thing, I don't have to do anything. See, I just pick out some small lettuce. Look at this. What I did was I sprinkled some seeds in here because I had some lettuce growing in here. Sprinkle the seeds and let it take off. And then, of course, I moved some in containers over there. But I was going to show you. This is what we were walking over here. As of this morning, the wrens are building a nest. And we are still in winter. We don't have spring for another month. I'm going to take a quick peek because the other day there was zero in it. So let's see if there's anything in it yet. There's no birds. Looks like they're just starting to put some stuff in there. They're going to fill that box up with quite a few leaves and different things. So let's get away. Let's make sure I don't want it to rock. And let's get away and let them do their own thing. Which is a good sign to me that if they're already in there starting to work on their nest, then maybe we won't have a freezing spring like we've had for the past two years. Last year was not quite as bad. The year before it was terrible. We were literally freezing at times. And one other thing, she's here. She showed up. We've got that nest. Where is that nest? There it is. That's where the Cooper Hawks had their babies last year. And she came back yesterday. She came in there and checked out the nest. She showed up two days ago. For a month, the male Cooper Hawk was just sitting up here on the power line screaming. I felt so bad for him. I was hoping nothing happened to her. Oh, he's still up there right now. He was screaming and two days ago, late afternoon, she showed up and sat up there with him. And yesterday she went up into the nest and checked it out. And now they've been hanging around here. They're making sure nobody comes around here. They've chased off all the ravens and everything. So I think we're gonna have a good spring which means I have to get ready to start planting. So with that, I'm gonna let Gary do his thing, because I'm probably bothering him just talking maybe. And then I'm gonna go back, and I'm pretty much done. I've collected enough of what I wanted to do. Now I can pull out one of those purple tree collards out of the small pots, they're in little tiny pots, and I'm gonna plant it on the end there next to the pole. And that is my job for today, and then back to work I go. Have a wonderful, wonderful day, and don't forget, to eat what you grow. Bye-bye! Some native soil. Some around yard. Some earthworms and stuff in there. Oh, back its way down. I'm gonna move this one. That's a smaller bucket. Um, get some more soil. Some more leaves. color. I think that's good enough. More native soil. tree colored over there. We'll see what happens with that. I think that's it. 
this thing staked up. Take off some of the bad leaves. Do that later. All right, the bad leaves back. Let's see if there's any bad leaves. You can just bury it right back into the soil. Okay, let's go get it set up. <laughs> 